Hello, I'm Joseph Coilo, children's author and poet, and it's a pleasure to be joining you for Newham Library's online summer programme. It's so great that we can get together during these times online and still share stories and books and reading. And of course, you can still take part in the Summer Reading Challenge. Go to summerreadingchallenge.org.uk and you can sign up and start reading books and start completing your challenge. I took part in the challenge when I was still at school. I remember going to my local library, which was in Wandsworth, and I went to West Hill Library and I had a little token. It was a little rocket ship on a board in the library. And every day I'd go and every time I finished a book, I would move my counter along until I read six books. I think they were all Roald Dahl books. Maybe you'll read some Roald Dahl books for your summer reading challenge. Or maybe a mix of authors and illustrators and non-fiction books and poetry books and story books. That'd be great. To get you started, I'm going to read to you today Luna Loves Art, which is my most recent picture book with the wonderful illustrator Fiona Lumbers. You may have seen Luna from Luna Loves Library Day, where she went to the library and things popped out of the books. But this time she's going to an art gallery. Let's read to you now. Luna loves art. Today she is going on a school trip. School trip backpack. Check. School trip lunchbox. Check. School trip instant camera. Click. And here's Luna with her dad getting ready to go on her school trip. I love the works of art he's got up in, the, in his front room. Dad drops Luna off at the school gate. Miss Rosa is waiting with the register. Luna's mum is a parent helper. Finn is alone. Here's Luna waving goodbye to her dad. Here's little Finn feeling alone. I love that playground, I love the mural in the background. Here's Luna's mum, who's a parent helper today. That means she's going to help out on the school trip. Today the class is going to the art gallery. The whole class is excited. The gallery is the biggest building Luna has ever seen. But Finn doesn't care. Finn is looking down. How big this gallery is, it's amazing, isn't it? And all these works of art, all the works of art you see in this book are real works of art. Things you can actually go and see in a real art gallery. They start off in a huge room full of amazing things, full of colour, full of shapes. Look at all the art, says Luna. Finn is looking up. This art looks amazing. Would you like to see it? Yeah? Look at this. Look at all the art. I'd be amazed just like Luna if I was in that art gallery. Miss Rosa takes the class to the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist room. Vincent van Gogh's sunflowers has paint so thick that the flowers look alive. Finn goes to touch it. Stop, says Luna. You're not allowed to touch the paintings. She's quite right, you know. When you're in an art gallery, you can't touch the paintings. You can look at them. You can have a good look at them. You can't touch them. Miss Rosa hands out some clipboards, paper and pencils. Luna does a sketch. Scribble. Should we try that again? Luna does a sketch. Scribble. Finn scrunches up Luna's picture. Hey, says Luna. Miss Rosa takes Finn aside. Why is he so mean, says Luna. Maybe he needs a friend, says Mum. Okay. 
Miss Rosa takes the class to the abstract paintings room. Casimir Malevich's black square is all edged black and cracked. A nighttime robbed of stars. A phone waiting to ring. Finn's mouth is open. Do you want to sketch with me, Finn? says Luna. Finn is silent. Have a look at this. Casimir's is black square. Very famous painting. Miss Rosa asks the class, Describe what is happening in Henry Rousseau's Surprised. There's a scaredy cat tiger in the jungle, laughs Luna. Finn roars at the painting. The wind is thrashing, the clouds are dark, the tiger is angry. But inside he is cold and wet. He wanders the jungle, staying in different places all the time. The tiger is scared and alone and needs a home. Mum leads Finn to a quiet corner. Luna follows. Henry Moore's family group is big and bronze. Luna takes a photo. Click. Families don't look like that, says Finn. Mum says, some families look like that, some do not. Some families are related, some are not. Some families are together, some are apart. There are lots of different families. Like all this different art. Miss Rosa takes the class to a dark room, full of lights and sounds. We can touch the art, beams Luna. It's incredible, shouts Finn. Everyone looks different under the pulsing lights. One big colourful family. Luna takes a picture. Click. Oh, look at this page. It's got shiny bits on this page. Miss Rosa takes the class to the art gallery, to the art gallery shop. There are erasers, pencils and badges, Henry Moore key rings, posters of sunflowers and black squares, postcards of tigers, toys that light up and flash. Luna gives Finn a photo. Finn gives Luna a drawing. Luna and Finn laugh on the bus back to school, take photos of the sights and talk about the art they remember. Luna and Finn love school trips. Luna and Finn love art. The end. And at the back of the book, actually at the back and at the very, very front, there's more information about all the wonderful works of art that are real, that you can actually see in real art galleries. So if you want to find out more about any of the works of art you've seen in Luna Loves Art, you can find out the names of the works of art, you can find out the names of the artists and find out more about them. Well, I hope you enjoyed Luna Loves Art. I'm now I'm going to read you some poems. Some poems from a very special collection of mine called Poems Aloud. Now this collection of poems have been written for you to perform, for you to read out loud because I personally believe that poems are best when they're taken off the page and read. So there's lots of different ways for you to read and share poems in this book and it's full of fantastic illustrations all done by Daniel Gray Barnett. 
So I'm going to go over to the desk and share some poems from Poems Aloud. Hello, I'm Joseph Coilo, author of Poems Aloud, illustrated by Daniel Gray Barnett. I'm going to share a tongue twister from this book. This book has loads of poems with lots of different ways for you to perform them. Tongue twisters are great for getting your mouth and your tongue all warmed up and ready to perform. See if you can say the lines of this tongue twister after me. Try twisting your tongue. Then tuning your teeth. Try taking your tonsils from a tummy tickling thief. Try tasting your tears, then trumpeting your toes. Try taping your temper to the tip of your nose. How did you do? I'm going to share this poem called To the Countryside. And the performance technique for this poem is called diminuendo. That means getting quieter and quieter and quieter. As I read the poem, I hope that you at home can join me with the beep beep beeps and the clunk clunk clunks and the huff huff huffs and the wee ow wee ow wee ow and the swish swish swish. Now listen to how loud I am at those points. You'll see my finger come up so you'll know what to say and when to say it. So let's have fun reading to the countryside. The beeping of the traffic. Beep, 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 roars in our ears. The belching of the factories, clunk, 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 shudders in our ears. The huffing of the people, huff, 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 mumbles in our ears. As we leave the roaring, shuddering, mumbling city behind us. The whiz of the motorway cars, meow, meow, meow hums in our ears. The whoosh of crops in the field, swish, 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 plays in our ears. The pebble roll of the sea on the shore hushes in our ears as we play the hum of hushes of noise no more, noise no more, noise no more in the country. Did you enjoy that? Maybe later on you can write your own poems designed to start off loud and then get quieter and quieter and quieter. This poem, Turn the Radio Up, uses a performance technique called crescendo. That means it starts really quietly and gets louder and louder and louder. I'm going to read it to you now tiny click of the volume knob to turn the radio on, a hiss of whispered static, I can hardly hear my song. So I readjust the tuning until my song's a little clearer. It's just above a whisper so I move a little nearer. The clicking of the volume knob turns my song into a shout. The thrumming of the bass I can easily make out. Twang, 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 so I click a little louder until my song becomes a riot. The drums vibrating through my body and my body really likes it. Boom, boom, boom. Now come the vocals and I really love this bit. So I click up the treble, this is the real deal. And now my song is singing, voice a booming mass of sound. I start to join in, I imagine I'm roaring to a crowd. I'm screaming down a microphone, I am the ocean's throat. I'm clapping out the rhythm, I'm a banging with my boot. I'm bellowing the low bit, I make hurricane sound mute. Now the crowd is within me, point painting the largest sound you've ever seen a wall of ear splitting symphony a vocal godzilla scene we are a screeching melody thumping reverberations we are louder than crashing planets we are the thunderous cry of constellations did you enjoy that i got louder and louder and louder because that is what makes a crescendo this poem has been designed, has been written to be read slowly. It's called This Bear. This lumbering bear is old. This lumbering, bumbling bear has shuffled over rugged, imagined mountains, urged his bulk slow and strong 
slow as geography, strong as tree growth, through the forests of his mind. This hulking brown bear, furred in shagpile, cloaked in dusty winter coats, sways to the tune of the camera flash, eyebrows worn smooth, his back is bald from sitting. This ungainly bear takes two dreamy steps from a cage bathed in decades of eyebrow fur, rusted with blood specks. He swaddles out to the first deep earth beneath his paws, the first thick wind through his thick fur, as his seasoned desires of water and wood and grass and stone roll out the colour of his imaginings, this heavy bear, this happy bear, this home bear, sighs out to freedom. That poem was inspired by a news uh, article I read about a bear that had been kept in captivity for most of its life, but was finally, thankfully, released to the wild. So it has a happy ending. This poem was written with comedy in mind, written to be funny. It's called Funny Fish. I live in the sea, I'm as sweet as can be, I'm a tiny little clownfish, but please don't stare at me. I'm tiny and pretty, colours all around my body, a beautiful little clownfish, living by a sea and an enemy. I have no enemies, I'm dressed to please, you see, a wonderfully fashionable clownfish, with a flair for modesty. Here comes one to admire me, a handsome princely fishy, who appreciates a pretty clownfish, what has he got for me? His smile is so deadly, a handsome catch for me, just a modest pretty clownfish by her sea and enemy. He wants to speak to me, his lips part so slowly, I am a giddy pretty clownfish, what will he say to me? Please swim to me, I find your enemy so stingy, delicious little clownfish, I am not your enemy. I feel a, a little silly, swimming to this handsome beastie, but he loves this little clownfish. I am a stripy beauty. My little fish finger, swim closer to me. My darling fish cake, from the bottom of the sea. My scrumptious little clownfish, you are the one for dinner. Get into my tummy, I want you for my tea. Vain glorious little clownfish, you're the treat for me. I hope that poem brought a smile to your face. <laughs> Poor little clownfish. I'm sure she got spat out afterwards though. On this page, there are lots of animal poems. And I wrote these poems with these animals in mind because these animals are all very different. And so you can make up your own voices. I'm gonna read you the poem for Lion. And I'm gonna try and do it in a lion voice, in the kind of voice I imagine a lion to have. I am meat liquor, bone cruncher, big meower. I catwalk with pride. My mane is a hairdo of envy. My roar is a rumble of mountains. My claws, a savannah of pain. Maybe you can pause the video and try reading frog or ant or sparrow in a frog voice, in an ant voice, in a sparrow voice. Good luck. This page has several poems, all of which have been written with different emotions in mind. And the idea is that you read these poems in the voice of that emotion. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna read this poem for sadness. And I'm gonna read it in a sad voice. When I'm sad, it feels like the sky is crashing down, like the oceans are rising and the ground is swallowing me up. All is dark and cold. 
So that was sadness. I'll try nervous next. Uh, uh, when I'm uh, n nervous, it feels like my heart is going to lightning strike out of my chest. Like my skin is raining, like my belly is a mudslide. It can be quite fun to think of emotions when you're reading poems. Why don't you pause the video now and try reading these different poems in the emotions. This one's for happy, this one's for angry, and this one's for excited. Try reading these poems in those voices. Good luck. Well, I hope you took part and enjoyed those poems from Poems Aloud. I'm going to read you one more to say goodbye. This is from the page about objects with voices. So it's using a technique called personification. It's when we turn a thing, or we describe a thing as if it were a person. So I'm pretending this pencil case is alive. I'm giving this pencil case a voice. The poem is called Pencil Case. I love holding your dreamer markers your thought spinners, the soft rubbed corners of your mistakes and the inks of your whims. I adore the notes you give me for safekeeping, the messages from friends, the saved sweet. I am happy to hold the edge of your sharpener, pleased to help you define your best ideas. I hope you have lots of fantastic ideas for poems and stories and that you take part in the Summer Reading Challenge. Remember to sign up, summerreadingchallenge.org.uk. Get reading, get writing, get inspired with Newham Libraries this summer. Take care and bye-bye.